So we've got loads of stuff to discuss today, but first I just wanted to show off this epic custom Cybertruck, Strong Tron Vibes. This is definitely my favorite custom Cybertruck to date. The ultimate blank canvas. It's amazing seeing people's creativity. This is just epic. And while we're on the subject of the Cybertruck, the Cyber Beast version, the $100,000 option, in the third quarter of 2024, sold 16,692 units. Doesn't sound huge, and it's not relative to Tesla's other vehicles. Still ramping up, though. But Sawyer Merritt pointing out this incredibly awkward fact. The Cybertruck in Q3 outsold the following electric vehicle pickup trucks combined. The Ford F-150 Lightning. The F-150, by the way, practically the last century, the best-selling vehicle in the United States, give or take. Plus the Hummer EV. Plus Rivian's flagship R1T plus the GMC Sierra electric vehicle. I'm just going to repeat that. Cybertruck, the niche product that's not a real truck, that's vaporware, that's a stock pump, that they're not serious about, that'll never end a production, that's impossible to manufacture, that no one's actually going to want to buy, is currently outselling Ford's flagship electric pickup truck, plus Rivian's flagship electric pickup truck, plus the Hummer EV and the GMC Sierra EV. Outselling them combined. And it's still only just slowly ramping production. Wow. And following the epic SpaceX Starship test flight number five and the successful first attempt catch on the launch tower, Joe Biden is still sleeping, so I can understand why he hasn't issued a unifying statement congratulating SpaceX on the accomplishment. After all, they are a US-based company, innovating, pioneering, and just doing incredible things. So he's still sleeping, I forgive him. And Comrade Kamala is out here leaking rumors that she's going to appear on the Joe Rogan podcast. By the way, she won't. Just to get the impression, or see, she's not scared. She might go on Joe, but it's not going to happen. So she's probably too busy to have said anything positive about this incredibly inspiring accomplishment from SpaceX. But, of course, big evil, horrid man bad has a lot to say. Admittedly, he's no rocket scientist, but let's have a listen. It's nice to hear credit where it's due. Look, I saw that rocket ship come in yesterday and go right back to where it took off, to the gantry, I guess yeah. they call it. And I said, what the hell? I, it was, I was on a phone talking about probably politics and the television and the television's on and I'm seeing this big thing where the white paint was burned off it from that you know thousands of miles an hour they eat and I see this big massive tube that's 10 stories 20 stories tall come down I, I, I told the person on the phone wait a minute I'm seeing something that's I don't believe it neither does anybody else here and I said, wait a minute, I put the, f I forgot the guy was on the phone, he waited for a half hour. And I watched, I watched that come down, and I watched it come down and come right in between those big levers, and it, I said, and it looked to me like I was gonna crash, it was coming in hot. And all of a sudden, boom, you see the motor, the, the, the fire kick in. And, and I called Elon, I said, that's the most incredible thing. I said, can Russia do that? Nope. I said, can the United States do it? Nope, he's the only one that can do it. And if that wasn't enough, same guy, same day, more comments in a different venue. Like Elon's rocket. Did you see the way that sucker landed today? What was it? I looked at it, I said, oh, that's too bad. Oh, that's too bad. It's coming down so fast. I said, oh, because he's our friend. We want, him. we want our friends to be successful, and he's really been our friend, right? So Elon's rocket's coming down. And I never saw, I saw where the engines came down. That was the first, a couple of years ago, I saw engines come down. I said, that was great. I said, why do you do that? He said, engines are very expensive. We can save them with certain formulas. He's giving me these formulas. I'm saying, forget it. You don't have to be that specific. <laughs> and now the whole thing landed. I never saw anything like it. And it's been through a lot. You know, you look at it. It was a beautiful, white, shiny thing. Now it's... It's burned to a crisp, but they landed. It needs only a new paint job. That's a lot cheaper than building a new one, right? But that was coming down. I looked at it this morning. I said, look at that. Oh, no, that's terrible because it was coming down so fast. And all of a sudden, boom. And it's like got this much on his side. We're going to have to get Elon to explain that. But another time, first we have to get elected, right? OK. But he's on our side. He's on our side. You know where he is today? He's in Pennsylvania campaigning for us, not me, for us. Can you believe it? And he's a great guy. He endorsed us. That was a great endorsement. 
We had uh, Bobby Kennedy. We have so many great endorsements. Uh, Tulsi, great. Tulsi Gabbard. We have so many endorsements. Now, truth be told, I really wish I didn't need to make a big deal about this, but in case you have noticed, the current Biden administration has been actively hostile toward Elon Musk and his companies, snubbing Tesla at the EV summit, stealing Tesla's valor and falsely claiming that GM were responsible for forcing the entire automotive industry toward electrification. There's been investigations and harassment. It's just ridiculous. I wish I didn't need to be pointing this out, but still nothing at all from the current president or vice president of the United States on one of the most inspiring, incredible engineering feats of all time. I mean, look, I understand that landing on the moon was pretty epic. That was a government-led NASA project. For a private company to do this and the first time Catch a booster back on the tower from which... Uh, bro! Bonkers! Everybody should be celebrating this and acknowledging it. JD Vance also had this to say. I believe the destiny of this country is to conquer the stars. Whatever your views on Elon's politics, this is something that should inspire all of us. Indeed. By the way, I'm trolling, but I'm going to call this the SpaceX Orange Man bad bump. Check this out. The poly market odds, for those who don't know, this is betting on the outcome of the US presidential election. So this also factors in shenanigans, pipes bursting, and so on. Trump now at a 16.4% lead. This is the result of people betting, putting their money where their mouth is. All I have to say, nature is healing. This is what things look like over the last month visually on the poly market. Now, the reason I bring this up, a Trump presidency is the best possible outcome for Tesla. And now you might be wondering, wait, who the fuck is this and why is there a Waymo vehicle on screen? Well, it turns out that Anthony Lewandowski, who co-founded Google's Waymo, says Tesla has a, wait for it, huge advantage in the data in the self-driving race. Quote, so I'm just going to repeat this. This is the co-founder of Waymo. Quote, I'd rather be in Tesla's shoes than in Waymo's shoes. Tesla already has cars on the road, some of which use semi-autonomous features for tasks such as parking and lane switching and learning all the while. Musk has the greatest fleet to do this, he said. And there's more. Quote, there's millions of Teslas out there that are constantly alerting, feeding back their data to Tesla to make the product better. And that's ultimately what's really going to be the differentiator here, that you have the richest, most consistent data to continuously improve over time. So uh, one more time, the co-founder of Waymo admits Tesla has a massive data lead, which is critically important when it comes to autonomy. By the way, I mean, I agree, no shit Sherlock, but... Again, I'm going to say, the co-founder of Waymo. And one final quote. I would say that the Tesla has examples of maybe 10,000 or maybe a million times more data than Waymo does in terms of all other scenarios of driving. And of course, in case you haven't figured it out, he's not currently working at Waymo, which is why he's speaking so freely. Meanwhile, I saw myself tagged in this over on X and I thought, hmm, how highly relevant. A headline from Business Insider Trading. Tesla making a mistake by pivoting to robo-taxis. And robots, says about her left hard and fund manager. Did I pronounce that name right? I can't remember. So we've got the co-founder of Waymo admitting Tesla's data lead is critically important and, by the way, unassailable. Up to a million times more data, and that's how you win. The co-founder of Waymo, and then you've got some guy, once described by the limiting factor as sentient hair gel, saying that Tesla's making a mistake pivoting to robotaxis and robot. By the way, uh, there, there's no pivot toward robotaxis I mean, they've been working on autonomy now for close to a decade. It's not like, a, oh, shit, hey, maybe we should make autonomy a thing. They've been working at this for a decade almost. And the humanoid robot, an obvious next step, if you built the brain and mostly sold vision in the vehicle, you can transplant that into humanoid robots and have an unassailable lead there too. Call me crazy, but my money is on the co-founder of Waymo. But hey, what would I know? And what's this on screen now? In addition to Tesla Vision, Optimus leverages many of our vehicle's hardware components like batteries, cameras, and computers. This greatly helps accelerate its development. So according to Tesla, they just so happen to have a bunch of technology they've mastered in their vehicles, which they are in a clearly dominant position. Not just computer vision, which they mentioned, but also batteries, the FSD computer, cameras. That will also accelerate the development of useful humanoid robots. So yeah, I definitely agree with Ross. What a total mistake to be pursuing this opportunity that you've already got an unfair advantage in terms of computer vision plus all these other things in there as well. Why would you bother doing that? It's not like it's a multi-hundred trillion, if not multi-quadrillion dollar opportunity either. Yeah, yikes. And just finally, I highly recommend watching on screen if you guys are just listening at the moment. I'm going to play a short 30 second advertisement from Fiat. 
<laughs> uh, now, I'm going to mute the sound. I'll probably get done for copyright. So bear with me here. It might sound a little bit quiet, but I encourage you guys, watch on the screen now. This is what Tesla's so-called competition are doing. Essentially advertising Tesla's own products and not realizing it. Check this out. Okay, electric versus electric. Shock versus awe. Oh, <laughs> inspired by angles. Inspired by angels. Oh, I mean, bro, I just... This is real, by the way. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, look, is it just me? I'm watching this and I'm thinking, you fucking idiots. Do, do you understand what you're doing now? This Fiat vehicle obviously has a certain target market. The polar opposite of the Cybertruck looks like, to me, a toy car that will come in a three-year-old's Barbie set to park in the garage in a dream home. Hashtag, somebody's going to get triggered for that for some reason. I don't know. you got issues. Go see a therapist. Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine being a company? Paying money to, to run an advertisement in which you're prominently featuring a competitor's product. Why would you do this? And I, It's just baffling. Now, in Fiat's defense, this may be a useful way for them to sell their whatever this little thing is. I don't know. Looks like something you just throw in your handbag when you go out dancing on the weekend. I don't know what it's called. The F500 or whatever. I get it, right? They may sell some of these. Well, look, it's not big and ugly and super masculine. And uh, look, it's look, it's so soft and gentle. And, uh, oh, but... This is also going to draw even more attention to how fucking bad our society is. Now, imagine the conversations in homes around the world when a couple sees this or a family sees this video, this ad. Not everybody who sees a cyber is going to go, oh, that's so big and boorish and brutish and oh, yuck. A few people are going to see this for the first fucking time because they were watching an ad from Fiat trying to convince people, buy this, it's much smaller and nicer and softer and gentler and whatever. I mean, free advertising from Tesla's so-called competition. Why not? I mean, judging by this ad here, I think the target mark for this Fiat vehicle is like soft, gentle, weak kind of person that would have this, it's in the emoji, right? This kind of reaction to something so badass, strong, angular, tough. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I don't got nothing else to add. I just can't believe it. Fiat. They're trying to make the side truck look evil or dark. But it just looks badass to me. With the lighting, look, the contrast, you know, the low saturation. It's just <laughs> unbelievable stuff. This is probably my favorite line in the whole commercial. They got the Cybertruck, ice in its veins, versus this Fiat turd, song in its heart. This is perfect. Ice in its veins is absolutely right. The most badass fucking vehicle on the planet, the Cybertruck. Thanks for the free advertising, Fiat, you idiots. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.